Hi everyone, welcome to Clinic to Corporate channel. And on this channel, we discuss non-clinical alternative careers for nurses, doctors, and life science graduates. Today, we're going to talk about something very interesting. Uh, this will apply to um, medical doctors already working in the NHS sector who want to move on to something in the pharmaceutical industry or uh, clinical research organizations. Today, we're talking about clinical research physician opportunities uh, from bedside to boardroom. Uh, if you are new to this channel, my name is Olu. I'm a medical doctor and I'm a clinical trial expert as well. So today I will tell you about what the clinical research physician is, what they do, um, what qualifications do you require to work as a clinical research physician, um, how much does a clinical research physician, and I'm very sure that you are very, very interested in that already. And I will give you some other tips and other insights that will help you to successfully transition into that career. Come along, like I always say, you'll be able to learn one or two things that will help you in your career journey. So we have a situation here in the, um, right now on the global scale, we have doctors that are help workers that are overworked and underpaid. We also have a situation where Recruiters in the clinical trial industry and in the pharma industry are looking for people who have a special skill set, especially when it comes to um, clinical diagnosis and clinical data analysis. But it's frustrating because they are not able to find people who, who have prepared for a role in the clinical trial and the pharma industry. Most people are focused uh, within the four walls of an hospital. And what has this done? This has created an imbalance between recruitment needs and the available talent. So these has created uh, unmet needs, and these unmet needs have also created a world of opportunity. And the reason why you are on this channel today is to see how you can use the skills and the qualifications that you already have to get into the industry space, into the pharma and clinical trial, clinical trial phase. They say when opportunity meets preparation, there is success. So the question is, are you prepared? Part of the preparation for your opportunity is always coming to clinic to, to clinic to corporate channel to watch the videos that we have so that you can get insight and inspiration on how to proceed on your career journey. So you might want to ask, why are clinicians jumping into clinical research? Well, it's all about the advantages, really. When compared to hospital practice, you have a better uh, work-life balance. Also, you're exposed to a whole world of innovation in medical devices and medical products. Another thing, a very, very important thing is that you get to earn better income, especially if you're a junior grade doctor or a nurse trying to move into the industry space. The pay is better and the clinical workload is far, far less. There, is some, there are also other advantages like you're exposed to global teams, global operations. There is always constant and fun learning, um, not stressful learning. And there's also opportunities for growth. You may be wondering uh, if I go into the pharma industry or clinical trial industry, will I be leaving medicine? No, you're not leaving medicine. You're actually expanding medicine. So let's talk about pay. Let's talk about salary package. What do you think clinical research physicians earn? In pharma, in the pharma space, they get to and far more than they would earn in any other sector of the industry. For example, when you look at the figure on the slide, you see that in Bayer, they pay up to between 94,000 pounds and 104,000 uh, pounds to their clinical research physician. 
AstraZeneca is also a high payer in this sector. You can see Eli Lilly and GSK. There are some other uh, pharma, pharma companies that I did not put here that also pay very well. When you compare these to clinical research organizations, the CROs, they just paid the mid range uh, between 50,000 pounds and 77 or less than 80,000 pounds. So if you're already um, in, a, in uh, employment where you earn in like 40,000 pounds per annum, 45,000 pound, pounds per annum, would you rather not um, consider working as a monitoring doctor or a clinical research physician for a CRO or for a pharma company? Um, another thing is, these roles still exist within the NHS space for those who are working as clinical research fellows. Um, these figures are from gla uh, glass doors, so they may not be um, absolutely what you find in some NHS trust. But from the figures, from the range that we have from glass door, in NHS, you expect it to end between 58,000 pounds to uh, 72,000 pounds. So I'm very sure that you are already interested in who a research physician is and what they do. Um, from, the, from the word physician, you already know that a research physician is also a medical doctor. And in some other organizations, they're given names like clinical trial doctor, uh, medical research doctor, or screening doctor. And they are basically involved in overseeing treatment, uh, investigational treatment, that means uh, testing of new drugs in human beings. And ultimately, they work to ensure patient safety by analyzing um, the study data in real time during the trial conduct and also um, guiding the trial conduct to close out, ensuring that every um, adverse event or any safety related events related to the uh, trial subjects are, cap are well captured, addressed, and reported to um, regulatory authorities and the sponsor of the trial as required. Um, I've already mentioned part of the jobs that a research physician um, performed during the trial. Uh, I've, I've mentioned about uh, ensuring that the, the trial subjects are safe. And also important, the other important duties that they perform is that they're involved in screening and enrolling of patients. That means they work together with the principal investigators on the site to see that the right um, type of uh, patients are enrolled for, for, for the study. And they also ensure that all the study um, items are performed in line with the laid down uh, study protocols, and more importantly, is the aspect of safety and adverse events reporting that I mentioned already. So, what do you, what will you need to shine on this role? We have the non-negotiables, and we have the game changers. Uh, like I mentioned in some of my previous videos, the non-negotiables are the primary medical degrees, your uh, general medical council license, and full registration. And for this role, it is important for you to have two to ye four years plus post-registration experience. And that means this role will be suitable for people with um, people at FY2, uh, FY2 level, uh, core, core trainee, registrars, specialty trainees. Uh, these people will find it very difficult to, uh, sorry, <laughs> I mean, they will find it very easy to to, to move from, from clinical career into the industry. Um, I also put the good clinical practice training. This is the GCP training, which can be done for free online um, for you to transition successfully into the clinical trial space. You, this is mandatory. It's not a difficult training. It's quite straightforward and simple. Um, so you can take your time to look for ICH GCP training. We used to have E2, R6, but now we have E3. So E3 is the most current version if you want to do it. Uh, what are the game changers for this role? Of course, if you have 
already have clinical trial experience, it will set you apart from other candidates. So um, I will talk more about this clinical trial experience and how you can get it as we go on. Another thing is if you have managed adverse events before while doing a study or while working with principal investigators, you will understand how uh, adverse events are detected, how they are captured and how they are reported. If you're able to put these on your CV to also set you apart. Another thing is um, being able to read and interpret study protocols. If you read NICE guidelines of four, and on other SOPs, uh, you will have an idea of what it means to read the study protocol. But I will advise you that if you have time, you can go on YouTube to look for what is a clinical trial protocol, what are the components, and what it's all about. This will also help you if you're going for um, a job interview for a clinical research position. position. Other things that can make you stand out is if you have used these tools before, or you have an understanding of what the tools are all about, or you can just take a short course to give you an idea of these tools and how they are used in clinical trials. For example, we're talking about Medidata, um, Oracle Clinical, which are clinical trial management systems. We're talking about uh, electronic data capture systems like Medidata, Rave, and Oracle Inform. Um, you can just watch, watch a short video on YouTube to see what these tools are and how they are used. Then we have safety and uh, pharmacovigilance systems like Argo Safety, Aries Global that are used to manage um, adverse events and uh, serious adverse, adverse events and safety reporting. We also have like um, an archiving system called uh, e, um, VivaVault. Yes, this is where all the documents, study documents are, are stored. There are other important tools like the coding tools like the Medra and WHO drug. Just find time to watch this video again and make a list of these tools and see if you can just have like a quick look at like a two to five minutes video about what they do. And if you do have the time and the resources, you can also uh, find a program that teaches this, uh, this but how to use these particular tools, maybe in, in Udemy or Coursera or anywhere, you'll be able to uh, learn more about these tools. So when they see, when a recruiter see you know how to use these tools, if you've tried your hands out on them or you have a proper understanding of how they are used, uh, this may set you apart from other candidates that are applying for the same position. So I did talk about how to get research experience, or I did talk about research experience being a very, very important criteria that will set the men apart from the boys when you're applying for jobs. Um, how can you get this experience? Number one thing that you can do if you're still working with NHS is you need to contact the research and development unit of your hospital, the R&D unit of your hospital, to ask about ongoing trials and to get the details that maybe you can find principal investigators on that study and see if you're able to volunteer to, to support the study and learn one or two things. It will be good for your CV. Another thing is um, you can contact NIHR about Associate Principal Investigator Scheme. NIHR stands for National Institute of Human Research, and they are, they, they are involved in building capacity for uh, clinical trials in the United Kingdom. So they do have some organized, they do have some schemes that can help you to, uh, to gain some capacity, to gain some skills and competence when it comes to uh, clinical research. So you can reach out to them. They've got a website, www.nihr.ac.uk, where you can get to reach them and also explore the website to see what programs you can partake in to make you, um, to, to help you to move on into a, clinic, a, a research physician role. Other, 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 um, other options you have is to undertake a clinical research fellowship one to three years post within the NHS system, also run through an NIHR funded research programs. And uh, uh, the last one is to 
go talk to the clinical trials unit of your hospital or of your trust to see what studies are ongoing and if there's any opportunity for you to join as a sub investigator or as a volunteer investigator um, on, on the program or you can even join at a more junior role as a study coordinator it depends on what uh, opportunities are available so who are the companies hiring right now when i checked when i did a bit of google search this morning i can i could see companies like Novartis. Astella Pharma, Richmond Pharmacology, Tamo Fisher, Genentech, and even NHS is hiring on these positions right now. You can just do. And some of these positions may waive for you some requirements because they are desperate to have someone on board and they will like to provide some, some training. Not all of them are very very insistent on you having a clinical trial um, experience yet they may want to bring you on board as a junior member of a team and make you to uh, work as a sub investigator and understudy a primary investigator for you to to gain an experience um, and i must say that it may not be may not be a, a site-based role there's some uh research physician roles that are purely remote and there are some that are hybrid while some are 100 percent on site so you need to uh, find out from the recruiter while uh, you are interviewing for this role so that you will know what is expected of you and so that's what we have today are you interested in taking a jump into this career would you like to would you like to learn more do you want more industry insights would you like one-on-one -on -one coaching and mentorship or cv support please reach out to me on on this uh, channel you you can uh, like subscribe share and drop your questions and i'll be fast to 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 respond to them thank you very much uh, i will see you in the next video thank you